Welcome to lecture number 30 for ECE 461 Control Systems, Converting from Continuous Time to Discrete Time, S to Z Conversion. Now, oftentimes the compensator is K of S is going to be implemented with a microcontroller. That results in a hybrid system. I've got a discrete time system, the compensator K of Z, controlling an analog system, G of S. That makes analysis difficult. I can analyze in the Z plane, I can analyze in the S plane, but mixing planes is really difficult. So what you can do is look at the world relative to the microprocessor. Relative to the microprocessor, every T seconds, I output a signal. It does something, then comes back. I then read an analog input every T seconds. So relative to the microprocessor, the world is discrete. So one way to analyze a system like this is convert everything to the z-plane. Which leads up to the problem, given an analog system g of s, how do I find its discrete time equivalent? There's a couple ways to do it. One approach is substitution. In Laplace, sy means the derivative of y. 1 over sy is the integral of y. So replace integration 1 over s with this numerical version. And here's kind of two versions of numerical integration. Euler integration is the simplest. What you do is you draw rectangles. I know y at each sample point. The area to the curve then is just width times height. I know the height, I know the width, that's my sampling rate. Add up width times height, and that's the integral of y. And you kind of see that uh, this is a little bit inaccurate. It's simple, but not, there's not the best. And there's actually two versions of Euler. There's forward difference, where I take this rectangle and draw it right, and backwards difference, where I draw it left. Um, all that means is that the conversion from the s to z is s is either z minus 1 over t, or z minus 1 over t times z. Uh, far more accurate is by linear. What you do is you draw trapezoids. Take the two endpoints, connect them together, and what that gives you is it's one half of the sum of the two times the width. Uh, flipping it to give you 1 over 1 over s, or s, the bilinear approximation is 2 over t times z minus 1 over z plus 1. So wherever you see an s in g of s, substitute, do some al algebra, and I'll have the discrete time version of g. Uh, for example, find the z transform of this system. I've got pull up minus 1, minus 3, minus 10. Think of a three-stage RC filter or heat equation. This system has a DC gain of 3.3333 and three poles. If I use the Euler approximation, wherever seen S, replace it with its Z equivalent. And what I wind up with, after a little bit of algebra, is a discrete time pole at 0 0.9, 0 0.76, and 0 0.5. And I also have three zeros at Z equals zero. If I look at the step response, the red line is the actual analog system. The blue line is the discrete time approximation. And you can tell because the stair steps, that one's discrete. With this version, I have, I don't have enough delay in the system. I need to slow it down. So what I could do is modify it, take out some of the Z's. Uh, but it's, it's fairly close. In MATLAB, I could do that. Here's my system G of S. Uh, to input G of Z, what I do is just add one more term. So these are the zeros, poles, and gain. If I do zeros, poles, gain, this extra term is your sampling rate. If I do that as four terms, MATLAB now interprets this as Z-plane. So I can sit there and check what's the step response of G of S What's the step response of g of z? And see, the two are close, but again, my z-plane is a little bit too fast. So that's one version. If I do Euler uh, forward difference, what I wind up with is no zeros in the numerator and have too much delay. The third option was bilinear. Take s and replace it with the trapezoid rule approximation for s. Do some algebra. This takes a little bit of time. Then I wind up with poles at 0 0.9047, 0 0.9048, 0 0.9049, 0 0.9049, 0 0.9049, 0 0.9049, 0 0.9049, 0 0.9049, 0 0.9049, 
0.7391 and 0.3333 get a little bit different than before. Again, comparing 0 0.90, 0 0.73 plus 0 0.90, 0 0.76, and 0.5 becomes 0.3. So there's a little bit of difference there. The zeros are quite different. Instead of putting three zeros at the origin, I put three zeros at minus one. If I look at the step response, it's much better. So again, bilinear is much better approximation than Euler. A little more complicated, though. Uh, third option. This is the approach that I really prefer. It uses the relationship between the s-plane and c-plane. The relationship is z is e to the st. So if I have three poles in the s-plane, I have three poles in the z-plane. And the conversion from s-plane to z-plane is e to the st. So what I'll do is take each pole, convert it, I'll then add a gain to match the DC gain, and optional, to get the delay right, add a bunch of zeros that's equal zero. So to illustrate that, let's take the same system. Assuming t is 0.1, I've got poles at minus 1, minus 3, minus 10 in the s-plane. Converting the z-plane, c is e to the st. These correspond to pole at 0 0.9048, 0 0.7408, and 0.3678. So the three poles in the S plane back to the back to the Z plane as such 0 0.9048, 0 0.7408, 0 0.3687. Next step is match the DC gain. The DC gain of the plant is 0.3333. DC gain of my compensator should be 0.3333 solve for K, and I get K is 0 0.0591. So there's G of Z. If I then take the step response, I can see that I've got too much delay in my discrete time system. If I multiply by z, put a z in the numerator, that shifts it left in time. That's move it forward by one sample, times z squared, moves it forward by two samples. z cubed is three samples. So kind of do trial and error to get the right delay. A uh, second way is you can actually calculate it. Pick a point, like s equals j1, calculate the phase shift at that frequency. My discrete time system should have the same gain and same phase shift. It has the same gain. I've got the poles right, DC gain's right, the phase shift is off. Well, e to z adds five degrees of phase shift. So I can sit there and add 5.7 degrees. How many times do I have to add 5.73 degrees to get 69.1? And the answer is 1.55. And this typical I need to add one and a half poles at s equals zero to get the right phase shift. I can't add one and a half zeros. I can add one zero, I can add two zeros, but not one and a half. So no matter what you do, g of, g of z is a little bit wrong. If I add one pole, I haven't added enough delay. If I, or, yeah, uh, one pole's got too much delay in g of z. If I add two zeros, I have, I don't have enough delay. So either way, you're wrong by half a sample. So pick one. I just chose one zero. And you can see the blue line is a little bit too laggy, too much delay in it. But again, the delay is half a sample. I can't do much about half a sample. So that's a, another way to do it. That's actually my preference. What I like about it is you can see the poles. Each pole maps is e to the st. So here's the pole at minus 1, pole at minus 3, pole at minus 10. And it saves a whole lot of work. I don't have to do your half an hour of algebra trying to simplify a system. But it's really your choice. Uh, let's see. So on MATLAB, I can do that as well. Here's my system in the S plane. In the Z plane, I'll just map the pole as e to the st. Uh, I guess the numerator is 1, and my sampling rate is 0.1. That gives me g of z. The numerator is not right. To get it right, find the DC gain of the plant, find the DC gain of the compensator, with the numerator being 1. I'm off by the ratio, so the numerator should be 0.052. So doing that, here's the actual system. And in MATLAB, I can check the step response. And notice that with no zeros in the numerator, I've got too much delay. Start adding delays until the two are close. And what you'll see is I need to add 1.55 delays. So either one or two. This also works with complex poles. 
if I have complex poles and complex zeros, again, everything maps is e to the st. So to find the zeros, I've got a zero at plus j5 and minus j5. Z is e to the st. So here's where those zeros are in the z plane. And to mul multiply that out as a polynomial, that'll be z squared minus 1.75z plus 1. I've got three poles in the s-plane. The three poles map to the z-plane as z to the st, and multiplying it out, there's the polynomial. So here's your g of z, the numerator polynomial, denominator polynomial, and it's kind of a sidelight. You need lots and lots of decimal places, so don't do rounding when you do this. Use all eight or nine decimal places. Polynomials are really sensitive to rounding. If you shift the pole slightly, you completely change the frequency response. To get the gain up top, the dc gain of g of s, dc gain of g of z, take the ratio, and that's the gain that you need to match the dc gain. So that's my discrete time equivalent. And if it's the same system, they should have the same step response. Take the step response of the two. Here's your s continuous time system. Here's your discrete time system. Notice with lots and lots of decimal places. And if you look at the step response, uh, yep, they're the same. So real poles, complex poles, they all convert as e to the st. And MATLAB, again, I can do that. Here's my zeros. There's my poles. Here's g of s. And the z-plane, the zeros convert as e to the st. Poles convert as e to the st. Um, the gain will be wrong. Find the DC gain of G of S, find the DC gain of G of Z. K is just the ratio. So throw in that fudge factor K, and that's my system. I can now check the step response. The step response of G of S is in red. The step response of G of Z is in green, or blue, the other green. And they match. Again, there's a little bit too much delay. I need a half sample, a half a Z in the numerator to fix the two. And I can't really do half a sample, so... I'm kind of stuck with a little bit too much delay in my model. One side light. Changing the sampling rate is a big deal. If you design G of S, or if you analyze G of S at t equals 0.1, get a discrete time equivalent. If you change the sampling rate, you get a totally different answer. What that means is that if I go through the following lectures designed by lead PID compensator, design my compensator for a given g of s, and I change the sampling rate, everything that I've done gets thrown out the window. Changing the sampling rate is a big deal. If you change the sampling rate, everything changes. So basically trash your entire, entire work. Likewise, as a control engineer, if somebody comes along and says, you know, I'd like to change the sampling rate, it doesn't sound like a big deal. It is a big deal. That means you have to completely start over and redesign your controllers. What that means is once you pick a sampling rate, you're kind of stuck with it. Uh, one other side light, time and frequency are, are related. If two systems have the same step response, they also have the same frequency response. So it's not obvious, but G of Z is also a filter. It's got a gain versus frequency. The frequency response in the S plane is S goes to J omega. In the Z plane, Z is Z to the ST or e to the j omega t. So given a filter in the z-plane, I can find its frequency response just like I can in the s-plane. And to illustrate that, this is g of s, the original system, g of z with the sampling rate of 0.1 second, g of z with the sampling rate of 0.01 second. If I plot the gain versus frequency, I can see the blue line is g of s, the red line is g of z with the sampling rate of 0.01 second, and the green line is G of Z with a sampling rate of 0.1 second. So the sampling rate of 0.01 is much more accurate. Uh, but basically, the part that you care about up here, while the gain is large, the two are basically the same. Same frequency response means same time response means same system. So that's lecture number 30 for ECE 461, converting from the S plane to the Z plane. Once you do that, I can start doing analysis like root locus in the Z plane. 461 Control Systems, Lecture Number 30.